here. Speaking of Ooh, questions, question. sounds like we got some questions. Basically, compared to some other drivers, we do things a lot differently. You know, we don't do like store bought, prepared TV dinner type stuff that you just take, put in a burnt stove, heat it up, and eat it, or just hit truck stops and eat it at the restaurants. Um, you know, we do, you know, the rest stops and, you know, cooking in the truck like you guys have seen, um, which is a big thing because that saves money in the long run. Um, yeah, as you guys have seen before this, um, we did a lot of cooking. The brownies, they're pretty good. She got yeah. to try them when she got back and, and they cooled off quite well. Um, probably throw them in the coolie if you really, you know, before we eat them yeah. so they harden up. Biggest thing is I think it's with the humidity. There's a lot of humidity down here in Louisiana because we're right where the storms have been coming through. Right. And it's really muggy out. So I think oh. that didn't help even with the truck running and the cool air in the rig. Um, I think the mugginess is what didn't help the brownies. But the rest of the food turned out great. Um, I don't know what we're going to have for lunch, but, you know, anyways. So basically today um, what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and answer your questions. And actually part of this is the first one I'm going to do is going to be directed at her because it's her department of the rig, not mine, hers. Mm -hmm. So from one of our viewers, you guys have asked us, I want to be an, a, a dry, truck driver and go over the road. I was wondering how would I pay my bills if I'm in the truck like you guys are full time? Well, Sam, how do we take care of the bills? Basically online. That's it? Yeah. We That's your answer. We do online bill payment. We either have... Um, Basically, our main bills are our truck insurance on our little truck that's sitting, which is depressing, but um, we've got that. We've got a couple credit cards that we pay. We have our storage locker, and I think that's about it. Auto insurance, uh, Capital One, uh, Emblem, which are two of the cards we use a lot. Walmart, we Walmart, use a lot. Yeah, Target, right. we use once in a while. Yep. Um, We've got your Lane Bryant, which is an old bill. <laughs> we have our school loans, which basically, oh, yeah, um, those are directly withdrawn. Um, my school loan from years back is still being taken out uh, every month, but we right. set that up for direct withdrawal. Um, any old bills that we've had, say like doctors and stuff like that, we we brought the original bills with us and we do try to send checks out. It's kind of tough because just to let you know guys, there aren't a lot of post drop boxes at truck stops. Right. And the chances that you're going to hit some place to drop something in the mail, you got about this much of a chance. Exactly. Because um, we've done tried to do postcards to our families, and it's. I've got a bag full right now that still needs to go out. Yeah, a whole stack plus a couple bills I'm attempting to send out. Yeah. So it, your best bet that's, is that's to, that's only two weeks. Yeah. That's two weeks worth your of stuff. Your best bet is to either have um, online bill payment or be able to go online via whatever company online sites. company you do. Um, have it, you know, set it up if the company has it where they can draft your account for you every month. Great. You know, that's the best way to do it. The best thing is have a smartphone. Um, I have a Blackberry, but at the same time, you guys also know I have this laptop here um, that has 4G. It's through AT&T. Now, I'm not pitching AT&T, but the company I work with has a bunch of deals with like Sprint and Verizon and T-Mobile and all them. I've had AT&T for years and uh, the thing, nice thing is is that basically this laptop I pay $50 a month to have 5 gigabytes of service. That's how I give you guys my my uploads. Um, with that though I have 4G service so wherever I've got service with this phone this thing's always got service right. and and it's always faster than a truck stop uh, thing. We've, we've tried it a couple times and for what you pay for truck stop, it's cheaper just to keep this thing running and spend a little bit more each month. Um, and then, like, for where I'm with, they have up, I think it was a 17% discount. So because I use the laptop on the road and I use this on the road, and I think your phone too. Yeah. All of our, our three accounts, which are all under my name, um, because I work for Swift. Yes, name dropping. I work for Swift. I get 17% off all my accounts. So basically I save because I spend at least $300 a month. I save about, say, 30, 40 bucks a month. But that, that honest, understand, I, when I look at that 40 bucks, that pays for the first 50 of this one. So it, that's why I try to kick as many videos up. Uh, we can right. do it, that's why we do it. 
That setup works great for us. I know some other drivers say that they do the Sprint Air Cards that I think are a flat rate, like 50, 60 bucks a month or something. Unlimited. Unlimited. Um, but you that never. Might I don't know what the service. For you. I don't know what the service is, but so right. far I've never had where this phone doesn't work. Are you getting the boondocks where you're back roading it sometimes on runs? Yeah, you'll lose service, but usually wherever we park, wherever there's a truck stop or rest area. 99% of the time you're going to get service between your phone and your laptop if you've got an air card. Just shop around, figure out what's best for you. Exactly. Um, uh, Nick, do you and Sam always sleep in separate beds? I know it's a space thing, but man, it's your wife. I would make it work. <laughs> well, Sam, I'll let you take this answer. Uh, yes, yeah, so we do sleep in separate bunks. Um, it is more of a space thing. It comes down to when you're tired at the end of the day, you just want to sleep. So it's not like we don't spend time together the rest of the time. We're up front for 10 plus hours a day driving, interacting with each other. You know, I cook dinner, we set up our little TV, we sit down and watch a movie, a TV show, um, and you know, we're together. <laughs> so it's, it's not like sleeping, non-sleeping together in the same bunk at night is a big issue. And we um, still text each other, guys. So if I <laughs> yeah. do something, I text her. Um, so we do spend time together. If we had probably a bigger truck that had a larger bed on the bottom, we probably would sleep on the same bunk. Um, it's just this truck is a little bit smaller than what we're we, used to. On our, on our 24s off, we do like move everything off the bed and we can get away with kind of napping and stuff together. Mm -hmm. Um, even the international would have been a bit of a stretch. So even even if we would have had the international still, um, that size bed is about as big as the bed we actually originally had when we first started dating long ago <laughs> and land far, far away. Yeah. I think it's a standard or some crap like that right. or a super single crap. Something, yeah. But, um, and the thing is, 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 is we kind of like our space because the thing is, she's got a, we have two different routines. My day is dealing with the truck and everything else and then Sam gets up throughout the night sometimes does laundry and takes care of the dishes and stuff like that guys so it kind of works where I'm up there and out of her hair because right. she gets up a lot gets in the cooler does does a lot of stuff down here in the lower level that just I, do, I need to be out of the stuff way for stuff that I can't do when he's driving I take care of at night type of thing yeah, and if I'm like sitting up there or anywhere else in her way I just I get in her way right so it's I mean, it's a routine that we've learned to work with. Exactly, and it's really not much different from when he was on the road and I wasn't with him. Uh, We're just adhering to old school marriage tactics of separate <laughs> beds. A happy marriage is one where you have your own bed. Right. I don't know, I just... <laughs> it works for me. Um, okay, so... Um, then, of course, I guess that, that also kind of helps answer the could you get a truck with a bigger sleeper, with shower, etc. Um be an owner driver owner op we've looked at doing the owner op thing but I'm gonna tell you guys this um, I've met some of the Swift well not like physically introduced myself but like we've been at a few places like I'm just gonna throw out there I was at the Iowa 80 with her when we did some time down and we were gonna get the rig washed and uh, we were up in the up and there was two owner ops uh, for our company um, and all they were doing is griping and bitching and moaning and oh I don't want to take this short run and I don't know why they're giving me these crap runs. Dude, take every freaking run. We're taking a four hour drive run today, yesterday. But guess what? It's still money. You know, God, I mean, you know, those are the same ones that are gonna are gonna whine. I don't get any time off. And I, dude, seriously, companies in general, doesn't matter who the hell you work for gauge what they're going to give you by what kind of runs you'll take. I have yet to officially turn down a run. I had the run before this, or the run that took me down into Houston, that the only problem I had with it, it was going to go three hours north and further into Oklahoma to go six hours south from that location um, into Houston. Well, here's the thing. Where I was was in the middle of both of these places. Three hours one way, three hours the other way. So why go three up to go six down? Right. I kind of let that one slip through. I never said I'd, I approved it. I kind of argued with my dispatcher on it. And she, we kind of came to the whole whatever, you know, and I just let it go. And then, of course, I got the run where we went right back through Paris, Texas, got that load, which was, <laughs> Bape works at 45,000, and it came up 3,800. 
Yeah. Who the hell that reads was a big stuff? thing. That's a company that didn't doesn't really usually outsource other than hit their own company drivers by what I understood you were saying. Yeah, they already had 14 trucks going to this location that we're going to because of all the weather that's been going through Louisiana over there by the by the river there in Baton Rouge area. So, so they had to basically outsource their drivers. But basically as we're let's get back to the subject owner op. <laughs> we've discussed yes. it. Um, it's just not us. I mean the thing is is I worry about having to pay for maintenance, tires, you know, fuel repairs you know every little thing here dude I go into the shop get two new tires you know what that day that I did the two, the, the two new tires the minor repair day I think it was in episode 17 yeah. um, three tires a trailer tire and two tractor steers that would run anywhere from say a thousand to depending on the quality of the tires up to fourteen fifteen hundred dollars that come out of my pocket okay uh, I like being a company driver because then it leaves all the repairs on them. Like the hood strut that busted yesterday, um, guess what? I can go into a shop and go, hey, I need a pair of these because this one fell off going down the road and I, I just want to replace the other one too. That's not out of my pocket. That's key word there. Not out of my pocket. They own the truck. They fix it. Nothing out of my pocket. And any repairs that we do do, like bulbs and that, I send a receipt in, I get it back on the next check. So right. as long as you keep receipts and you contact your DM, usually 99% of the time, they will give you the stuff. So for drivers to sit there and be on the road and go, well, I couldn't get this bulb replaced, or I couldn't do this, or I couldn't, you're not con communicating properly with your dispatcher. I know people rip into Swift, but I'm gonna tell you this, so far, 99% of the time, when I send a QC message to my DM, she will fire back, a reference number and a PO number and it'll tell you that I can spend this much. I've gotten oil on the road, coolant on the road, washer fluid on the road, lights on the road, load mm -hmm. bars on the road because my right. truck, the idiot that when I was getting this truck at the Columbus Yard, one little idiot was running around all the rigs Slide where down. these were bobtail and actually walked behind my truck and two others and walked up with three load bars. So he snagged the two that were off the back of my truck originally. Now I got three up in the back and guess what? They're locked up. Nobody can walk off of these. If I never use them, guess what? I still think it was worth the money to get them. I got the info on if I wanted to be a Swift owner op, but the thing is, is you don't get the insurance coverage, you don't get the health coverage, right. you don't get all the stuff that they, you know, the 401k. You own a business, that's what you have to remember. Yeah, so, so yes, you do make more here in the mileage, but understand, you're still paying for all this crap here, and then you're back down to here where a company right. driver is. So anybody, and nothing against owner ops, but anybody sits here and says they bring home say two, three thousand dollars a week. Tell them what is it after expenses. Ask them what it is after expenses. If they can't give you a straight answer, then they're full of crap. Right. Because that's the biggest thing I hate. Because I've had a former Stevens driver, friend of ours, no longer a friend, but a friend of ours at the time, who kept coming back with this number, and I go, so what's what? What do you take home after? And even with my old job, I was taking home more than her with all the expenses and crap she was wasting on the road. So well, you have to you really gotta, research it. Yes, you have to look at it too. You have to weigh the pros and the cons. And you also cannot let your company try to talk you into a lease option. Don't if be it's not for you, it's not for you. You there it's kind of like if you we come from military families, it's when you go to a military recruiter and they try to talk you up on the job saying it's this wonderful thing sell you on the perks it, and, and sell you on it and you time and time again you get people that will leave the military because they go in and they go this isn't what the recruiter told me it's like you've got to pay for this you got to pay for that you got to pay for this you got to pay for that and yeah you may be making more money you can pick out what rig you want all the features like if we wanted to we could get a bigger rig we could get one with a shower and you know basically a whole well, camper shower, on the but... freaking back but you have to look well, not at it that as, big, but you, you know, you you have to look at it as it's your owning your own business, and is it for you? Plain and simple. Some people come into it, and they've they've been drivers in their family for years, and that's what they want to do. They know the ins and outs of the companies, and and the the whole and Swift and like with Swift, picture, they were and they know how to do it, and that's their dream to do it. Great, go for it. But if it's not for you, it's not for you. You gotta you gotta weigh it. Yeah. And then our last question we're going to end on, it does, Swift have APU units? 
No Swift does not have AP units, APU units. Um, we do have a heating unit for the winter months. Um, it runs off the diesel in the truck. Um, we haven't test fired it yet. We're not brave enough because it's <laughs> hot out. Yeah. But it, we do have a heater. Um, we do idle our truck a bit more in the summer months. Um, I think we, I haven't gotten yelled at in my month of being here. Um, I do it more on the days that are over 80 degrees, pushing 85, 90, or to. muggier than hell. Like, we would be, we normally would be idling it now because it's really hot out, but uh, we wanted to cut the noise because we didn't know at this distance from the camera how much it would pick up. If you can be the one, can you be I'm going to beat her up later, guys. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I think that, that answers. More questions? No, I don't think that was the ones we really were going to try to address in this video. Okay. We'll get more probably. You guys always send us questions. All right, everybody. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, trip planning. Um, trip planning has gotten a little bit easier with, uh, with Swift um, or trucking companies in general. Um, with all the technology you've got, you've got your, your QC, you've got your GPS. Um, I have a Garmin 465 LMT. It's more of a backup for figuring out truck stops and rest areas. I do have a couple of books uh, that have all the truck stops and locations on every highway. Um, but as for the QC, basically when I get an order in, um, okay, so on your QC, mine's affectionately nicknamed Debbie because I hate calling it Jill and Julie and all that other crap that everybody else calls it. Mine's Debbie out of affection. So when you get a loan assignment, you get it in a, a, a dispatch, which gives you all the information, gives you the trip number, tells you if there's any uh, the amount of stops, uh, it gives you the business name, the address, the uh, course city, and then as you go down, it'll tell you pick up date and time, it'll tell you the weight, the pieces, the bill of lading number, um, any kind of trailer, trailer type is van, which is what we all do. If there's a preloaded trailer or if you're taking your own trailer, this is a trailer I had at the time when I went to pick this up. Um, and then down here, any special instructions, um, like trailer was clean, needs to be clean, no holes, food grade, 53 foot, no roll up doors, um, no translucent uh, rooftops. Um, and then what you do is when you get this, you hit, if you want to do the load, and you've got the time to do the load, you hit reply. And then all you have to do is come in here and change your macro to 9, which is accept next load. You put in your trip number, and then you say, yes, I'm going to commit. And that's all we have to do. Now, if you're running behind and say you want to take it, but say you're, you've got to take a 10-hour down, and when, you're going to, when it needs to be picked up, um, you're, you're still going to be in a down status, you can put the ETA for the pickup, you can put it in there, and you can put a reason down bottom, submit it, either they'll update it to what works for you or not, and uh, usually a good chunk of the time they will uh, be nice and uh, sometimes update those depending on how hyper-focused or if it's a JIT load or, you know, an on-time. Um, then you also, one of the other emails you get is also the destination, um, which will tell you the consignee or the, de you know, the delivery point. Um, of course, the information, the address, and of course, destination time and delivery date. And then it'll tell you if it's a driver load, uh, if it's a live unload. Uh, it'll tell you how many miles you're going to drive that you're getting paid for, how many empty miles, when the ETA is, which was, this was 3 o'clock. Um, for a reload, that means after I deliver, I have by three o'clock I should be ready. And then it also tells you under special comments, like for this one, um, it says to slide my tandems all the way to the rear when I'm unhooking. So that's a request by the delivery point that when I drop my trailer, to put the tandems all the way back when I unhook the trailer for the day. And then one of the new features that we have on the, the QC. Um, that I like is when you get your dispatch, you go to the navigation key, and you'll get a little thing that comes in with it once you accept it and you're you're empty from your previous load. 
you hit the dispatch button and what that'll do is it'll come up with stops. So here's my pickup gram packaging and then all I have to do is highlight it and hit go and hopefully if it works today I'll show you even though we're at the destination let's see if she'll talk today this is back in Houston Texas and I'm all the way in Port Allen Louisiana so it should route me in reverse let's see if it works come on Drive to Route Start at South Lobdell Highway. And then, of course, it will show you the route. The route. And then, um, if you ever get where, see, where it says you're out of route, you just hit that again. And then, when you get to your pickup location, all you have to do is come back to the dispatch. And then, here's the delivery. And then, I click Go. Sometimes, it doesn't seem like it took, but it does. This is Passing new. This is a brand new feature. This started just last week for this our company. Um, at first, it wasn't working, but I like it now. As long as you're up to date on keeping all of your all your uh, uh, off Drive time. to route start at South Lobdell Highway. See, so again, that's telling me how to get to where I'm going. And of course, I don't need that right now because I'm not on that run. I'm going to hit follow me because that's just easier to do when I don't have anything going on. And then um, I'm going to go home. Home. Messaging. And uh, basically the other messages that you do when you arrive at a shipper, you will, I'm going to cancel this one. Would you, you want to cancel? Yes, I want to cancel because I'm not going to send it. So when I get to my shipper, one of the ones that I do is a loaded call. And on the loaded call, oops, sorry. Loaded call is when you're loaded. What you do, first thing you do is you put yourself sorry I don't know why it's being touchy there you go so first thing you do when you arrive where you're getting your pick where you're where you're going to get your load you click this send it off and it'll show you immediately is there before you put yourself in an off-duty status and then of course I put myself in off-duty status go check in and then you'll get a back uh, an email from them saying driver such and such you've arrived at your destination make sure you check your mirrors and yada yada as you back and then once you get done and you get your bills of lading, and we've got a whole ton of them here, because that's also going to ask and answer another question here. I'm just going to pull the stack out, because this is my stack. And then when you get to where you're going, they will give you your bill of lading, and your bill of lading, you get to your bill of lading, and all your information will be on that. And then when you do your loaded call, you will put in what time your destination information and the other email uh, gave you you put all that in here come down put in your bill of lading number up here the weight that they say it is the pieces they say it is you put your lock on any seals any information if you dropped a trailer say it was a drop and hook you put the drop trailer and then the packing the, the pickup trailer put all that information in there you'll send it off and then it'll basically route you as to the next place then when you get to your shipper or your receiver, sorry, I'm not used to having to say this stuff. Basically, you do a macro five. Basically, arrived at final destination. Then what you do is you'll take your paperwork, and you, of course you'll go in, check in, put yourself off duty, you know, delivery status. And of course, as always, you've arrived at your shipper. Make sure you've got your tandems and all that kind of fun stuff squared up. When you get done, you'll put your PTA. So when you get done, you'll say today's date is 9-2. It's uh, 18:40, or so you'll say 1900. And then uh, you'll go down here. You enter in the first name of the guy who signed on your paperwork, and then at least the last initial. You'll put in if you had you removed your lock. You'll give a fuel level if you want to. Um, you didn't unload it, or if you did, you put that in. If it's a drop and hook, you put your trailer you dropped, the trailer you're picking up, you send that off, and then usually by the time you get to your next, uh, go down here, once you send your empty call, you'll get your next assignment that you already approved. So you'll get like, this one says Campbell's Soup, and of course we went to Texas with it. 
And then when you get your new directions, this is where we're leading into the trip planning. Part of what you'll get when you get, after you say you've been emptied and you're going to your next pickup, you'll actually get an email that looks like this, or a QC message. And what this will do is it'll, here's where it'll tell you that your destination for fuel is Mount Vernon, Texas, exit 147 off of I-30, and I can purchase 95 gallons. Okay, so you can use this card for, you use it for purchasing fuel, and you can use it at any ATM with the PIN number you set up, and your paychecks can go on this card. This is mine. I use this for fueling. Um, I use it for when I'm doing purchases that they give me authorization for. Um, and then, of course, it'll give you the rest of your instructions on where to go, including, like, it'll say the instructions, stop one, which is your pickup, and then fuel stop, like this one says, I-35 South, and then continue I-35 South to Frontage Road, US 82 East, US 271 North, stop one, which would be my pickup, and then from there I go back on 82 East, and then you know, basically go from there and then it tells you all the way down to stop three, if there's a third stop, which is actually your delivery. Now you guys say, okay, now since I have this and it does offer me the basically um, messaging. navigation program, do I need to, you know, trip plan? Just because this is basically, this will give you routing now that it's got the program where the dispatch will show you, it'll even pull up the fuel. If there was fuel on this run, which between this pickup in Texas to this delivery in Louisiana, there was so little miles that they didn't give me a fuel fuel up. But if I needed one, it would have been in there between the the, um, pa uh, the the packaging and the mobile there. And you it'll you can pick you highlight what you want, you hit go, and it'll go in that order. But you have to actually select it and hit go to be to do directions to that. Um, now I have my garment up here yes it's a very basic garment it's a trucker edition but it's a very basic garment and I use this because on this thing it has where it does do um, all the different categories between truck repairs towing and recovery all that kind of stuff truck washes um, truck stops um, where I get pallets trailer repairs I think I said that already locksmiths fuel stops glass repair um, way stations rest areas but the one thing on this thing under points of interest if you sit here and go say you have your trip planned of course you do they have trucking you hit trucking and you can do anything that, like if you're looking for a place to go down on your route you hit this and it'll show you everything between where you are and where your destination is and you can sit there and go okay like I think we've already got our next run in here and only nope I think I canceled it out Okay, like here's, this is next to our next destination. These are the, like some of the rest areas that are right by where we are. Now, with the other book I have, I'm still going to sit here and come over to my big old book, get yourself a Motor Carrier's Road Atlas. I get the $20 version at least every year. I don't spend the money on the big $60 laminated. Why? because things change yearly. Why spend 60 bucks a year on something you're gonna get every year? And the wife uses this, since she's my co-pilot more than I do, she'll sit there and take the directions and actually go and go, okay, yes, da 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 this is, da, you know, she'll actually make sure that it's the roads that are required or allowed by trucks to be on, or that allow trucks to be on it. Um, so I do double check this once in a while, but between this and this, um, that's how I plan my day. Like, I'll sit here and say, okay, so we've got 700 and some miles to drive. Okay, well, let me see how far I can get. And I'm going to look at, say, I've got eight hours in my day. So I'm going to look on my route near my destination, kind of go do backwards with my GPS on this one, and find something that's at least, say, a couple hours out like instead of saying I can go straight to my destination in eight hours I want something that's at least an hour out or two hours out as a backup so if traffic accident whatever I've got something already pre-tripped into here that'll say okay if I'm getting say the end of my out like I'm getting the one hour and my DOT day for driving I've already got something figured out on this thing 
I don't have to fight this, and I don't have to sit there and start freaking out, going, oh God, oh God, and I gotta look at all the signs and start looking for places. And I'm gonna tell you guys this, I prefer rest areas. A lot of truck drivers are gonna hit the truck stops first because guess what? They want the convenience, they want the food, they want the showers. You know what, we do that every other night when, you know, when, we, when we do it. You know, rest areas are the most underused well, I mean, they fill up quick, but that's only after the fact. You know, I mean, first thing to get is a truck stop. Next thing to get is, you know, the rest areas. They're a fallback, you know. Um, but basically, that's the way we roll um, with trip planning. It's pretty simple nowadays. Um, and then... Um, yes, again. Hours you of have service. seven hours and 52 minutes of remaining drive time. On this, it has a graph of my day. It shows that I started my day. I started my day at 12:40 in the afternoon. Then it shows like today, I was in Louisiana, and I drove for. Uh, let me go. I already did my proof summary. Uh, proof eight days daily log. Uh, today. So I drove for 32 minutes before, not 32, an hour, a couple hours before we ran into traffic. And then of course, I got to Baton Rouge. We went down for 22 minutes while I was dealing with getting ready to go see a shipper or receiver. Um, this is what you guys normally would see if you guys are doing paper logs. Um, you could put notes in here, whatever you want. Um, I don't, I usually save when I do my status changes, like right now we're in a sleeper, all I have to do is hit change. I can put myself off duty, I can put a note if I want, um, I'm not going to. Um, sleeper burst, what you're in 90% of the time when you're not driving or on duty fueling. Um, basically driving, keyword there, driving. On duty, I use this for when I'm fueling, pre-tripping, post-tripping, or where I need to log something work related but between those I'm either in a sleeper berth and off duty a lot when I'm not driving and not pre-tripping or working on the truck um, I'm trying to think that's the main QC I want you to be nice you got the bug of me today I'm trying to give you guys some stuff to look at get yourself I don't know if you guys can see this I have it's a driver's load notebook you use it to put all your information and in. you put your load information, um, if there's pickup number, the date and time. I don't need to put tractor in there because you got the same truck. Uh, the trailer you're picking up, if you're picking up, drop in the trailer, put that in there where you're picking up. All the information goes on here, your seal number, your pickup time, date, um, how heavy the load is if they tell you. Um, any information. You any information. Need you know, that's, that's relevant to that load, you know, like I'll put on there like, like, uh, oh, come on, where's one? Any special instructions? Yeah, like I got, I, I've got all the ones back for the last month in here, you know, like I've got like Dollar General, they've got like a hundred numbers. Every number you get that's on one of these, messages. any number they give you, any reference number, pickup number, any number, write it in here, because you're going to look like a fool if you go up to the window and they go, well, do you have... This number. Yeah, like I've gotten up there and they go, well, we don't, we're not looking for a bill of lading number. We're looking for number... I can't remember what the hell it was. You know, it was something, you know, sometimes it's the same trip number that you've got. Sometimes it's another number, you know, preloaded oh, number. Oh, it yada, started yada. with this number. Yeah. And you like, go, oh, okay, it's this number here. And if my little helper wants to go back to a wide shot real quick. We had a wide shot. Okay, can you see this now? Yep. All right. Now, I had one guy, a viewer, ask me about paperwork. This is all my paperwork. This is, boys and girls, since my hiring back around 4th of July, this is just the paperwork for that since then. And it's, you guys ask about copies. These are all the originals. I've never had to do any kind of sending them in. All we do over here at Swift is you get these uh like trip sheets in a booklet they come all like like a 
Notebook, like, almost. Yeah, like a notebook. And they all, they did detach from the notebook, and all you do is you put in your tractor number, your trip number, your driver code, the trailer that the trip was on. So if you had whatever trailer you had the load on, that's what's got to go here. And then you attach everything. If you did scale tickets, you attach those. And on those, you also put the trip number somewhere. I usually like to put mine kind of right here in the center. Um, I kind of float them around depending on if I've got notes on it. Um, you know, same thing with the actual bills of lading. you got to put the trip number on it. Because what you do is you go to a pilot or a flying J with our company. And see, every page you got to have the trip number on. And you take these, and you take them, and you go to that little little uh, Transflow Express, and you set them on the Transflow, you hit the F1 key, scans them in, you, you hit the page down, you make sure all these are readable, and then you hit the F1 key one more time. It takes like five seconds. Why guys don't know how to do this sometimes? I've watched guys come in there and they're like, I don't know how to do this. It's like it even shows how to do it. This takes, like, I think I've taken five seconds out of my day even with like three or four of these behind when we're back to back runs and we don't hit a pilot or a flying J, it takes like a few seconds. I think even Loves has them. I've had some of them, some do. of them do. But you scan this in and then what you get is you get a little thing that says the time you scanned it, the date you scanned it, and of course it should say the company name for fleet and then, you know, going off to Arizona. And then you hold on to this. And what I did is we got parked at next to a Big Lots one day that was next to a a uh, office staples. staples max thingy whatever mm -hmm. and I just picked up one of these holders and mine all sit in here and I'm gonna keep this until it's pretty much full I'll probably just keep this one and then once it's full I'll uh, pack it away and then pick up another one of these and then when it's full pack it away and the until company requires you to keep them for how long at least a couple of months I'm gonna say I'm I'm not gonna toss them any, at any time until I hear otherwise. I mean, even though I get paid for them, once I get paid, that's it. But you never know if they might come back and say, "Hey, we need a copy of the original again," because of a dispute or something. And as long as I've got these, and I can say, "Hey, I've got the original," that covers my ass, you know. And it's one of those things. And of course, in my case, I keep mine, and I'm not gonna show you guys, but I have a spot right behind my seat that I keep them. And of course, usually the wife's and I put them away for me. <laughs> I scan them, she puts them away. So, come on. All of these here, when you get your own QC, you'll see what the macros are. But there's like uh, 63 of them. And I'm not going to show you guys, but I have, I have a little labeler and I made like a little cheat sheet. Um, I got the graphic, I'll probably put it in. But like I've got one where when you scale a load, you have to hit macro 50 and you put in your weights and send that off. That's usually anything over a 63,000 pound load. Uh, I don't know if the wife was trying to go for a picture of it. Nope. Um, I've got a breakdown, not that I've had to use it. Um, a, a macro 9, which is an accept a load. Daily macros that I do when I wake up are a macro 10, a 32, and if I need to, a 34. Um, 34 is ETA for next stop if I have a problem. 32 is my driver vehicle inspection report, which is basically checking the oils, fluid, tires, which you guys have seen me do on my daily routine. Um, and then a 10 basically is confirming yesterday's hours. Um, of course, macros five and six are uh, arriving at shipper. Macros one and two are arriving, or macros five and six are arriving at delivery point macros one and two are a lot arriving at shipper um guys i don't know what else i think i've covered a whole bunch here i'm kind of confused myself <laughs> it's one thing to do it it's another to talk about it um i hope there's some clarification in there for you guys if um, more questions than that. and i'm gonna hop in front of the camera here so you guys can see me i am here it's not all like voiceover um I've tried to answer this to the best of my knowledge. Um, there's probably more questions that you guys have gotten after you guys have seen this. Ask and I'll just answer them down below in the box. At this point I'm going to get the hell out of here. Um, I need to turn the truck over. It is roasting down here in Louisiana, the Baton Rouge area. And uh, as you can see I'm getting a horse, uh, horse in the throat. I don't talk this much on average unless the wife's interrupting me. So I'm going to see you guys later. We're going to get this rendered and thrown up tonight. So enjoy episode 19, another freaking one up.
Cheeto and I approve of this message. Oh, come on! What the hell?